In this video, we are going to build a parallax animation with frame or motion using just three lines of code. So here's a demo of what we're going to build. As I scroll on this page, the background video of this hero section has this nice parallax effect as we scroll. So here the text at the bottom is kind of overlapping as we scroll down the page. To get started, go ahead and download the starter code using the link in the description down below. Make sure to run npm install to get all the dependencies and let's get into it. Here we have the starter code for this project. It's a pretty simple one page website using Next.js and style with Tailwind. But now let me run npm run dev to get this loaded up. So here's the website already kind of built out and styled. You can see this kind of couple of things here. So first at the top is a hero section with a nice little background video here with a little bit of a Fade, fade out to black at the bottom to transition into the next section, which is a grid of made of features here for this kind of demo website. And then there's some extra space here that I've put in just so we have enough scroll space to work with. And then in the code, pretty much all the code sits in this the main index file. Great. So now let's start thinking about implementing the parallax animation with Framer Motion. And as I promised, it's only going to take three lines of code. Let's just take a moment to talk about what parallax is for those of you who aren't super familiar. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the parallax to the hero video at the very top of the page. Now, typically when I scroll this page, you'll see that the video moves up at the same rate that I'm scrolling, right? That's how we kind of get to these next sections. But with parallax, what we're going to do is artificially push down this video as I scroll so that it moves a little bit slower than how fast I'm scrolling, which will let it stay on page for a little bit longer and overlap with some of the content below. To do that, given that we are working with a scroll animation here of some kind, we're gonna use a very helpful hook that Frame Motion gives us called use scroll. We are going to pull out an attribute from use scroll called sc scroll y progress. So we're gonna say let scroll y progress equals use scroll. So scroll y progress will just tell us how far we've made it down the page, how far we scrolled down and just gives back a value from zero to one. So then what we can say is, well, we can set this new value, let's call it y, which we can set to a use transform, again, from frame of motion, and then pass it a couple values. So first we're gonna set this value based on scroll y progress which is gonna take a value between zero and one. And we want that to map to, let's say values of 0% and maybe 25%, let's say. So this is just us setting how much we wanna push down this video by as we scroll. And so as we scroll further and further down the page, as the scroll Y progress goes up, we're essentially gonna push down the video by up to 25% at the very end. So now all we have to do now is just attach now this Y to the video. And so for that, I'm just going to find the surrounding div here of the video. I'm going to make this a motion div, of course, so that we can work with it in frame motion. And then I'm simply just going to add the style attribute and then just pass in the Y value from above. With those three lines of code, if I scroll down, you can see it is sort of working. It's a little bit difficult right now to see it because of the values we've put in. So let's be a little bit more aggressive on the parallax. Let's make it maybe 50%. And so now as I scroll, you can see that it's, it's staying on page for a little bit longer and it's overlapping with the text. So let's even make this a little bit stronger. Yeah, now you can start to really see it really show up. We're going to make this a little bit better in terms of how we're coding. So right now we're being pretty aggressive here with how much we're keeping this video on page four by setting it to say, let's push it down essentially 100%. So the whole value of the height of this video, that is because scroll by progress is based on how much progress we've made on the whole page. And this page goes down for quite a bit. And so it keeps tracking and is gonna try and keep the video on page, you know, as much as possible as we, all the way as we get to the bottom. So as you can actually see, this video, you can still see it a little bit even until we get to the very bottom and then this one that disappears. So to make this a little bit more intuitive, we're going to pass in a couple of additional attributes to scroll Y. 
essentially we can set this scroll wide progress to not just be of the whole page, but to be of a specific element. So to do that, we need to pass in a couple of options into use scroll. So first, the first thing we'll need to pass in is a target ref to the element which we want to track. So first, I'm just going to set the ref up. So let ref equals use ref. Be empty for now. Let me import that. And I'm going to attach this to the header, the broader header parent. So we're going to use this to track now the scroll progress of this broader header section. So now in the use scroll, I'm going to pass in a config object. First value you're going to pass in is target, which we're going to set to ref. And then the second attribute we're going to pass in is something called offset. You know, as we think about the scroll progress, there's going to be multiple different ways we can tell Framer Motion to track the scroll progress. Specifically, we need to tell it what is our definition for when scroll progress equals zero and what's the definition when scroll progress equals one. So for example, here, what we we'll want to do is say, I want scroll progress to be zero when the top of this header matches up with the top of the screen. And so that's the first value we put in offset. So we'll say start of the element is at the start of the screen. And then we'll say, well, we want this progress to be equal to one or 100% when the bottom of the header or the end of the header is at this top or at the start of the screen. So we'll say end start. And so now what we'll see is, we're going to leave this at 100% for a second for the transform. As you can see, as I go up, it's like really being aggressive now because now it's tracking it based off of just this header scroll. And so you can see it's really staying on page for a long time and then it starts to move up. So now let's bring this down to let's say something 25% or so. There we go. And now we get a pretty, I think a pretty reasonable parallax effect there uh, for the top. And the really nice thing again of setting the scroll wide progress to be a little bit more specific is now this is independent of the size of the rest of the web page. So we can keep adding more stuff to this web page. This parallax effect is going to look the exact same no matter what. So with that, we have successfully built in the parallax rolling animation in just three lines of code, as I promised. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Also, if there are any other topics that you want to see covered on the channel, feel free to drop comments down below with any ideas you have. And on screen now, you'll find a link to another great tutorial that you might want to go check out next. And I'll see you in the next video.